Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Fred Sutton and today in this video I will be discussing the statement of cash flows using the indirect method. So if you look behind me here you'll see that I have it divided into three different activities that we're we'll using to uh, figure out the statement of cash flows and put everything together. First the operating activities which focuses on the operations of the company or what the company primarily focuses on. And the investing activities here is the acquisition and the, the bringing in and or selling of long-term assets. And then finally, the financing, that focuses primarily in the financing on the uh, long-term debt and then also your stock owner's equity. So it could be bonds, uh, putting out there bonds or reacquiring bonds or provide dividends uh, to the, the shareholders. So let's first start talking about the op uh, operating activities here. So to start off with, you basically you start with the net income when you use the indirect method. So you start off with your net income. So you take that from your income statement, figure out what your net income is, and then you're going to start from there. You want to take it all the way down. You basically have the answers to what the changes has happened in your uh, in your cash from your your beginning cash to your ending cash. So you know what's happened already. But what we're trying to do here is figure out where all the changes have happened. If we are a company and maybe we aren't doing very well in our operations and we lost a lot of cash, maybe it's $100,000, then maybe we made up where we have a lot of positive by bringing in financing. We've sold a lot of stock and we're bringing in money that way. I would like to know that as long as if I'm an investor. Or maybe we've sold a lot of bonds. So we have a lot of debt out there. All those things are things that I want to know as an investor. So that's why it is broken down into three specific categories for us here. So starting with the income, uh, the operating activities, we start with the income, and then we're going to work and basically go backwards and figure out what, how do we get to that. So we start off with the income, then we make some adjustments. So the adjustments that we'll make are first, we'll start with depreciation. So the first one is depreciation that we'll make. Now depreciation, if you think about it, we're going to add that back in. The reason we're going to add that back in is that's a depreciation, is we're taking that away from our net income. We're taking that away, so our net income would have been higher if we had not taken depreciation expense. And this is a non-cash item. Basically, we have taken away some of our income, and so we want to add that back in. And then also we have some amortization we're going to add back in too. The amortization can be taken uh, uh, as something, if you've seen another video about bonds, it, it may be something we've amortized, a discount that we've gotten for, uh, we have for bonds, and we amortize it over five years. That amortization is also, we can take that away from, or, uh, this, take it away from, our, uh, to come to our net income, so we add that back in to figure out the cash effects that has happened to it. We also then may have a loss or a gain. Now if you see here, you're looking at it going, what, what, what has happened here with a loss? A loss here, we are taking, you're going to add it back in because you have taken it out from your net income, so we're going to add it back. And again, we've added it to our net income, so we're going to take it back out. So we're moving the things that have not contributed to it in a cash way. So that's what we are doing by doing all of this. So it's the opposite. So if you want to write those things down, that may be very helpful to you. All right, so now moving forward, we're going to take a look at now some of the other adjustments. So we now have to make some adjustments to the changes to current assets and liabilities. So when you're looking at that, you're going to look through all the, the current assets and all the current liabilities and look what your changes are as a part of that. These are your basic, that you'll have the adjustments and then you have these here. Now obviously we're not going to touch cash because that's what we're trying to figure out at this point. So if we're making the assumption that everything is tied together. Remember we're looking at the balance sheet. That once we do our cash is tied to something else on the balance sheet. And so that is why we are doing this. So if I have an increase in my asset, I'll move this over here actually, or a decrease, what does that do? So if I have an increase, I will actually take that increase away. 
And the reason being is this. If let's take our accounts receivable, which is the current asset, if I have an increase to my current assets, then what will happen is that that increase will cause I me mean, not to be able to pay the cash for that asset. So I will not pay, I'm, I'm taking away that, that cash that I may have as a part of that. So what I'm going to do is decrease it. Now here, if I decrease it, it means I uh, receive more accounts receivable in, then I will add it. Now on the liability side, it's a little different. And the reason being is this. Let's just take accounts payable and look at it from the accounts payable side. So in accounts payable, if you'll see here, if I have accounts payable, if I increase my accounts payable, that means I have not paid that bill. So therefore, I'm going to add that. So I'm saving some cash because I haven't paid it yet. If I have a decrease, that means I paid it using my cash. Therefore, I have less of my cash. So that's why we're taking it away. And so that's kind of how it works through the operating cycle here. And that's what you can really figure out to figure out at the bottom here would be your net cash flows. For uh, operating activities. All right. Now moving on to the investing side here. So as you take a look at the investing side, it's a little simpler. It basically is this: What is the cash that we receive from the sale of something? And the cash that we paid out on my investment side. Cash payments. And this is going to be a long term, or not, let me actually write this as a non current asset. So, examples of this is maybe a building, land, computers, and those type of things there. So, what we paid in as a part of that. And so, those are non current assets. So cash received and take away the cash payments. Pretty simple to figure that out. So we'll add in the cash received and take away the cash payments. Now financing is similar to that in that we will follow and basically the same sort of ideas there. So this primarily affects long-term liabilities. And our stockholders' equity. All right. So now this is where we'll focus on. So some of those things that we'll work and take a look at here is that we have received cash in from some things, and then we make some cash payments. So again, we may so we may receive, and I'll go over a few of these here. So cash received. Cash payments. So what we have here, so we may have some of the things that could be for uh, issuing stock. So I'll draw it down here. Could be from dividends. Could be bonds. Now, if I'm issuing stock, I'm getting money in for that. So that will be adding in. If I'm giving, paying dividends, I will then subtract. And then if I have bonds issued, I will also get money in for that. So those are some of the changes that can happen as a part of that, our financing activities. So in the financing investing portion of it, it's a little simpler in the fact that we just figure out what is received and what are we paying out. And we focus on these areas here, non-current assets for investing and for financing or long-term liabilities and stockholders equity. Now the operating activity, as I review here, we start with the net income, we start making the adjustments to our net income, adding in the depreciation that we took away originally, adding in the amortization that we originally took away, adding any loss that we took away, or uh, subtracting gain 
that we that we had, and then any changes to our current assets and current liabilities. And this is the breakdown for those. This is the indirect method for the statement of cash flows. I'm Dr. Fred Sutton. I hope you enjoyed this video.